Part of the theme of these talks is ideas. And for an idea to develop, you often need a problem to overcome. So let's take a problem. Let's take the biggest problem currently facing us, climate change. This could lead to mass extinctions, loss of global biodiversity, conflicts, and even wars. So for a problem this big, we're going to need a pretty big idea to solve it. And as a lecturer at Bangor University, I often talk to my students about some of these ideas. Ways to cut greenhouse gas emissions, geoengineering. But a few months ago, I came up with a much simpler idea. And it turned me, quite by accident, into something of a somewhat surprising eco-warrior. The idea couldn't be simpler. And bear with me with this. The idea is this, a plastic drinking straw. Not just one of them, though. 550 million of them. Because that's how many are used in America and Britain every single day. 550 million of them. And they get thrown away. Yes, they could, or many of them could be recycled. But realistically, this doesn't happen. They're too small, and it's not economically viable to do so. So they get thrown away. And they join a staggering number of other single-use plastic items which are thrown away every single day. Plastic cups, plastic bottles, plastic bags. So many plastic items thrown away. <coughs> it's plastic's affordability, its versatility, and its durability, which has ensured that plastic has found its way into every single element of our life. It's hard to imagine modern-day life without plastic. And some of it is essential. Without it, advances in medicine would stop. Advances in science would stop. Advances in the exploration of our oceans and other planets would stop. It is incredibly important to us. But let's take a step back for a minute. Around about the, just before the Second World War, hardly any plastic was being made. Since then, 8.3 billion tons of plastic has been produced. 8.3 billion tons. And here's a sobering thought. Apart from a very small percentage which has been incinerated or burnt, all of that 8.3 billion tons of plastic still exists as plastic. So a plastic drinking straw, which you use as a child to drink your first chocolate milkshake, still exists. It's still out there somewhere. Every straw you have ever used is still out there somewhere. Now, they may, may have broken up into smaller pieces, but they don't break down. Plastic doesn't break down. It doesn't decompose. It doesn't rot away like paper or cardboard. It stays as plastic. Scientists are now thinking that plastic will stick around for so long that it will become the geological marker of our time in history. So think about that. In millions of years to come, the sign that we were here will be a layer of fossilized plastic. It's quite a legacy to leave behind. And it's not just going to be in the areas of landfill sites and such like where that layer is going to be. Because plastic waste has found its ways to the top of our mountains, to the very bottoms of our, of our oceans. And in fact, it's our oceans which have received some of the worst effects of this plastic waste epidemic. Our oceans have, unfortunately, often been seen as the best places to dump our rubbish, out of sight, out of mind. And unfortunately, this is still the case. 12.7 million tons of plastic finds its way, is dumped into our oceans every single year. To give you some perspective, that's about a truckload of rubbish dumped every single minute into our oceans. And once it's in our oceans, the effects can be devastating. I am sure we have all seen the pictures of dolphins and whales drowning because they've been wrapped up in nylon ropes. We've all seen pictures of turtles choking on plastic bags, which they mistakenly think are jellyfish. Of seabird chicks dying, their stomachs full of plastic. When plastic is in the ocean, we know that harmful chemicals can attach to it and be released from it. We also know that plastic can break down into smaller and smaller pieces, called microplastics, and that these microplastics have affected every single level of the food chain. But really, we're only just getting our heads around the full consequences of what all this plastic in our oceans could mean. The fact that plastic is durable. One of the reasons we like it so much is also the reason it is causing us such a problem. Because plastic does not decompose. It accumulates. It accumulates wherever it is dumped, in our oceans. This is why it is a fully-fledged environmental disaster. <clears throat> so you may be thinking now that the plastic waste problem is just as big an issue as climate change. And you'd be right. 
and the two are connected. Now, this is my mum. <laughs> my mum reuses everything. Uh, she, for every bag for her is a bag for life. She still uses bags from businesses that went out, that shops that went out of business 20 years ago. Um, she washes and reuses tin foil, um, even baking paper, and woe betide anyone that rips any Christmas wrapping paper, because that can be used again. The idea of the disposable throwaway society has not really reached her in rural Shropshire. She is an accidental eco-warrior without even realizing it. But most of us, most of us have embraced the throwaway disposable society. And here is a link between the plastic waste problem and climate change. Most traditional plastics are oil-based. Therefore, if we can stop using so many plastics, then we can reduce the amount of environmentally damaging fossil fuels and their byproducts in the manufacture, production, and transport of plastics. Because as I've said, some plastics are essential, but many aren't. Many of them are used once and thrown away. And it's these types of plastics which we should be trying to cut out from our lives. And we can cut them out from our lives. <clears throat> One of the worst culprits is this, the plastic drinking straw. We do not need to use these things. And if we do, there are fully compostable ones or reusable ones we could use instead. We do not need to use the 550 million of these a day which we currently do. And if we didn't use all those straws, and if we did manage to cut down some of all those other types of plastics, then we could be cutting down the amount of fossil fuels needed. We could be cutting down our greenhouse gas emissions. We'll have solved climate change. Well, no, unfortunately not. That's not really the case. As, as much as I'd like to say it is, that's not really how I think this straw can solve climate change. Indeed, if we cut down uh, on our use of throwaway plastics, disposable plastics, we could be reducing greenhouse gas emissions in certain areas, but they might increase in others, and the story is a lot more complicated than that. No. The reason why I think this straw can solve climate change is for another reason entirely. The problem of climate change and, plastic waste, and the plastic waste issue they're huge. The problems are huge. It's almost unimaginably huge. And it's almost impossible to think how anyone can have any direct effect on, on the problems. But how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you complete any journey? How do you complete any task? One step at a time. And it's this realization <coughs> that I wanted to do something. I wanted to make more of a difference. I wanted to do more than just put out the weekly recycling and use, use my reusable bags in the supermarket. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to have a go at eating an elephant. And I decided to do this not because I'm some kind of hardened environmental campaigner. Far from it. I've never done anything like this before in my life. No. The reason I decided to do it, and that's why, by the way, I do like to call myself an accidental eco-warrior, rather tongue-in-cheek, but that's what I class myself as. But no, the reason I decided to do all this was simply to show my two young kids that we should all be doing something to help improve our environment, and we all can, and we can all make an issue, a, a solution to even the biggest of problems if we put our minds to it, and if we work out where the first bite of that elephant should be taken from. So... It was after surfing on Anglesey one day, and I seeing the amount of plastic waste that was being washed up onto the beach, that I came up with that first bite. I came up with the idea, and I launched Straw Free Chester. The aim of Straw Free Chester is to make Chester the first city in the UK to stop using plastic drinking straws. We want to do this by encouraging all businesses not to give out a plastic drinking straw automatically with every drink, we want customers to only request a drink if they really need one. And we want everybody to consider moving over to fully compostable or reusable straws. But why straws? Why not all plastic? Why concentrate just on one thing? Well, that's just the point. I wanted to concentrate on one small thing, the first bite of the elephant, the first step. I wanted to, have to solve one problem, one small achievable problem, drinking straws, before moving on to the next. As Matt Damon's character says in the film The Martian, when asked how to overcome the biggest of problems, you just begin. You solve one problem, then you solve the next one, and then the next, and if you solve enough problems, you get to come home. You get to eat the elephant. 
And so far, that first bite of the elephant has been a tremendous success in Chester. I've had businesses pledging support from small independents to large multinationals. When I, when I organized the first Straw Free Chester public meeting, for anyone interested in the campaign, I, uh, ordered, I, I booked a small corner of a pub with a couple of settees, thinking I'd get four or five people there if I was lucky. We ended up taking over the pub. I had street cleaners, teachers, business owners, political parties, and fantastic groups like Friends of the Earth, all coming together <clears throat> to make a difference, all brought together because of a straw. This straw was bringing together a group of people and a community wanting to make a difference. This straw gave them something to focus on. It gave them, crucially, an action which they could take, which they could see a result for. By saying, no straw, please, they could see that a drink they had in a bar didn't have a piece of plastic. And that piece of plastic was, therefore, not going to end up in a landfill site or, heaven forbid, the oceans or somewhere else. It was giving them an action. People like to see results for their actions. It makes what they're doing relevant. <clears throat> I go walking with my two girls, Isabella and Elva, <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in the hills and countryside all the time. If I said to them, though, right, we're going on a two-mile hike through this deciduous woodland and restored wetland complex, they would look at me blankly and have no interest whatsoever. However, if I said to them, right, we're going on a treasure hunt, I want everybody to collect as many fairy acorn cups as possible. We're going to count all the rabbit holes we can find, and we're going to have to keep an eye out for the goblins. Now they're interested. Now the walk is relevant to them. Uh, we're still going to go on the same walk. Admittedly, it may take us longer, and we may get attacked by goblins. However, we're still going to do it. And this time, we're not going to do it kicking and screaming, but we're going to do it positively and happily. And the same is true for climate change. If you tell someone, right, you have to do something about climate change, what are they going to do? Look at you blankly and have no interest at all. Same for plastic waste. Where do they start? Where's the first bite of that elephant? What's the first step they're going to do? The problem is huge. What are they going to do? You give them a straw to focus on, and they have their first piece of treasure on the treasure hunt through the forest. They have the start of a path for the end result. The end result is still the same. Cut plastic waste, combat climate change. But this time, they've got a direction to follow. They've got somewhere to start. And Straw Feed Chester is most certainly the start of where I'd like to take this campaign. The next step is to work with the environmental group Surfers Against Sewage as part of their Plastic Free Coastlines project. We want to make sure that Chester can be given accreditation for being a plastic-free city. We've got people interested. We've got them hooked with the straw, and now we're taking them further. And it's not just Straw Free Chester and Surfers Against Sewage who are campaigning about this. There is a growing groundswell of support for cutting plastic waste, with more individuals and more campaigns joining all the time. This support is infectious and powerful, so powerful that it is now changing big businesses. Supermarkets are saying that they are going to be changing their plastic waste policies. And even the government is now saying that they will be taking action. Many of these campaigns were all started with a straw. <clears throat> so, what's the next step for us? Well, <clears throat> we now need to move from straws to plastic. Because, again, we have the steps. We have the way forward. And in terms, of, in terms of the environmental campaigns and environmental issues, I have not seen any issue grab the public's attention and passion as much as the plastic waste issue. We've all been told for years that climate change is a problem. We all know this, and we all know we should be doing something about it. But it's hard for people to see a result for their actions. They can't see the mass of carbon that they could be saving by switching off their lights or changing to energy-saving light bulbs. It's too abstract for them. But the plastic waste issue is different. They can see the problem in front of you. You can see plastic waste problem in front of you. And crucially, you can do something about it. You cannot use a piece of plastic. You can go on a litter pit. There is something that you can do. And it's People are starting to do it. They're starting to realize you don't need to use this plastic drinking straw every time I get a gin and tonic or a cocktail or a, or a glass of Coke in the pub. I don't need it. And that's them making them think, what other bits of plastic don't they need to use at all? This straw has helped people to start thinking 
differently about our throwaway, disposable society. And that's the point. That's how this straw can help solve climate change. Because we've now got people engaged, interested, and doing something to improve their environment. Now we need to, to tell them what else they can do to improve their environment and make that relevant to them too. That's the challenge for all of us who accidentally became eco-warriors because of a, pl a plastic straw. That's how Straw Free Chester and this straw can help solve climate change. One bite of the elephant at a time. Thank you.